Hello, everyone, and welcome to Leela. I'm Lee Philbrook. The intention of the Leela community is to transform conversations and practices into actions that make a difference. And Leela comes from Sanskrit, and it means divine or creative play. It literally translates to your story, and we love to explore others' stories. I'm super excited for our show this evening. We're gonna kick it off with a short background on us, your hosts, followed by an opening intention. And I'm thrilled to have some of the Call to the Mothers team with us this evening as our special guests. I'll then do our closing announcements or our, our closing intention and then our final announcements. So I do encourage you to have your cameras on. It really does create a sense of community and connection. And um, please feel free to ask questions along the way. And so here we go. I'd like to pass it over to my co-host, Lisa English. Welcome to Leela, everyone. This is a space where you can learn, explore, and have fun. Through our storytelling, we hope to inspire you to live a intentional life. I'm a high school teacher and a youth mentor, and I'm super excited to explore this beautiful story of magical synchronicities with you all tonight. Stay tuned for some exciting topics. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it back over to my co-host, Lee Philbrook. As a transformation coach, I am passionate about supporting women who are overthinkers. I use my skills as a Reiki master, a master practitioner of NLP and hypnotherapy to transform, evolve and empower them to live their best lives. I assist them to release their self-criticism, frustration and struggle to move into ease, flow and a sense of inner calm. I'd now like to do our opening intention that really connects us and holds the space for this evening. So I invite you to close your eyes. May divine grace surround us, uphold us and cherish us all. May it support us and our sacred trust and community. May we be strong together and our journeys be brighter and higher for having walked side by side. May we be guides for others and ourselves with clarity, tenderness, and light, feeling gentle in our minds and clear with our words, being strong in our creations, sending peace in all directions of time. With gratefulness, we take this moment to arrive and join together. Open your eyes. Welcome to the room. And now over to Lisa to introduce our special guests. Tonight with Hilary Van Welter and Brown Mazingati, we will be exploring what has happened with the project Call to the Mothers Malawi. It is a beautiful initiative emerging in Malawi, Africa, that was sparked from a Leela broadcast in April 2021. One year later, this unique social innovation is now taking form in magical and surprising ways. A Call to the Mothers Malawi will be profiled from its origins to its pilot of A Taste of Wonderland to the exciting seeds that are now growing. I'd also like to mention that Romila Verma was supposed to be with us tonight who's part of the call to the mother's team. And unfortunately she won't be here. So uh, we wish her all the best and hope to have her on the show again soon. And with that being said, we would like to welcome everyone. Welcome Hillary. Oh, you're muted, Hillary. <laughs> yeah, the famous words, you're muted. Uh, it's lovely to see some <laughs> familiar faces and uh, greetings. Um, and yes, I, I was on a, just over a year ago uh, to, to profile Call to the Mothers, which is an initiative that we have uh, started to 
a really passionate call around change to radically reimagine mental illness, mental health and addiction. And one of the reasons why Rami isn't here tonight is for this very reason. And we, we, ra we need radical change. I cannot stress that enough. And uh, what we did on our show on Leela uh, a year ago was to profile our rather unique process of research and action development, uh, which is called a taste of wonderland. And we profiled it under the, um, under the call for youth to be able to explore how do we change the conversation, but even more importantly, how do we ch not even change a system? How do we bring a new system into place to deal with mental health and addiction, which we, we de desperately need? So um, I, we've had a wonderful time. And, uh, and ne next thing I know, I have uh, a an email from Brown Mazingati from, uh, all the way from uh, from uh, Malawi and I'll go holy cow so back over to you Lee because it was through your connection um with with Brown that this all came about yeah it's it's crazy um what can happen in a year I mean it was um I guess I started in 2018 I was in Zamba Malawi and I was actually doing a pilot project myself um, with an uh, educational soccer program for preschoolers. And uh, Brown was actually involved as the program leader for that, uh, that program. And we connected and we connected on Facebook as you do. And, you know, fast forward to 2020. And that's when I launched Leela with Lisa. And Brown saw our posts on Facebook. And he was very interested in the conversations that we were putting out there. And um, he specifically saw the broadcast with you, Hillary, um, which really is almost a year to the, I think it was April. It was April um, of last year. And yeah, he reached out to me and he was just, you know, wanting to make an impact in his community. And uh, the connection, I connected the two of you and um, that's what tonight's about is, is really sharing the magic. Like, it's so amazing that a year later, um, you've, you've run this pilot in Africa and everything that's happened. So um, what I'd like to do right now is Lisa's going to share uh, a video clip of Brown sharing his experience. Oh, no, he's no muted audio. too. <laughs> We're all muted to begin with. Through working as a community development officer in Zomba, I came across Lee Philbrook, of whom we interacted and worked together in the field of early childhood development running a project called Little Tickers, and I happen to be one of the implementers of this project for a month. After this project in 2018, she returned to Canada and we continued communicating. At the same time, she asked me if I could join the Alila broadcast where Hilary Van Water was presenting about Code of the Mothers. Uh, on her presentation, Hilary Van Water talked about mental health and safe motherhood based on her experience, and this excited me. As the issue that we are presented are common in my country, Malawi. These issues are most common among the youth and women in Zomba, especially uh, Binari village, which is also our passionate area. After the meeting, I decided to reach out to these groups. I approached both community leaders and district council for approval to conduct such meetings. My first assignment was with Indecha Youth Club. I used the notes that were sent by Hira through Lee Philbrook we interacted with the youth and they found out that most of the youth are facing challenges that may result in mental health issues. The interaction with the youth is still going on in the Binari village, Guru village headman Chopi in Tradition Authority of Malinia, Zomba. Soon after the meeting, the youth, women of Binari community were inter interested and asked if this can be accelerated to them. Having been requested by the women, I reached out to Hillary where I told her what transpired at the community. She accepted the women's request and a meeting with the women started in a uh, binary village. 
during the community meetings and, and our, our interaction with the Hirari, there was an idea of running a pilot of taste of one land. This is a, uh, uh, this is a research based on the story of Alice of one land. I took an initiative to assemble the team of different professions. Together, we have been going to Binari village for meetings with women as well as and, and uh, chiefs. And we underwent several Zoom meetings with Hirari for the taste of one land pilot. Hillary oriented us on the unique approach that none of us have had before. There were several Zoom meetings and practices to perfect the approach for the pilot to go smoothly in Zomba. Uh, having gone through the orientation, resources of this activity were made available. The facilitators underwent a brief meeting so that we could check using our checklist the materials that were needed for the pilot. The pilot was conducted on 17th March 2022 and it was it came out to be more successful than expected. Thanks so much. I just love you, Brown. I absolutely love you. You are just the best, best, best uh, person to work with. Um, and he and, and Brown did went on the ground to get background research to really dig into what were the significant issues that that people were really facing and and without his research, uh, we wouldn't have been able. Hi there. How's how's how you doing? <sighs> We wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to 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 do any of the uh, uh, to the customization of the process without the kind of research that Brown did and laying the groundwork uh, that he did to be able to um, be able to to actually know that we had approval prior approval from all of these people <laughs> to actually run a pilot sight unseen was absolutely phenomenal. And so, um, and it was it was actually a really wonderful process to be able to you, you take the idea of, of Alice in Wonderland and and you know we did check is this the right story to bring to Zamba Malawi? You know, are we doing colon, uh, colonialization again? And uh, and Brown said no. The people love the story. They love the story of a girl who, against all odds, is able to face no matter what adversity finds new ways of, of handling them and maturing and growing in new ways. That's what they loved. So we took that essence and we integrated it with cultural, with, with, uh, with cultural dynamics, perspectives, activities um, that made it a really interesting integration um, of Wonderland. So it was, it was, um, it was fabulous uh, to be able to do that and uh, to be able to, you know, do the training of the facilitators and, uh, um, and it was, uh, it was just a, an incredible experience. Thank you so much for that, Hillary and Brown. We're, we're so glad to have Brown on the call this evening. Um, internet goes in and out so hence why um, we pre-recorded that but he is here uh, with us this evening which is so exciting and it's something like 2 30 in the morning so thank you for your and brown we are just so incredibly grateful to you um, and with that being said i'd like to hillary ask you um, how did the the funding for this initiative come about so again it was one of those miracles um, in terms of, um, you know, we had, we jumped in without any funding to support Brown. We did, you know, we did all, we, uh, we just said, we, we, we have to try and do, we have to do this because this was to have that kind of, we've had such a little reception in Canada, like zero. And to have this kind of reception where the pave, where the road was paved for us to be able to come in and do that with authority saying yes, with people saying, come, you know, we have to find a way to do it. So we went ahead and started developing. And we started doing all the, you know, putting together the process. Meanwhile, Brett Wasowski, who is, uh, is one of our co-founders, who is just a marvelous connector, um, he just started moving through his lists of people. And it happened that one of his friends, he was living in Cairo at the time, and one of his friends that um, um, in the building that he was, uh, was staying in, uh, she had a relative who had did business in Africa and who just heard, the, heard Brett talk one night and said, send me something about what this is about. So Brett did and, and, and he turned around and, and provided us with 20,000 US dollars 
which allowed us to wow. continue on in the development and to actually most of that, a lot of that money went into, you know, supporting that we had to get computers, we had to get, you know, technology, we had to, you know, we had to, it was starting up the cult of the mothers Malawi as much as it also was funding a pilot. That's amazing. So it was the gift. It was such a gift. It can't, and it was so, my gosh, we are so grateful. So very grateful for that. Yeah, again, the synchronicities of how all these things came together when people say yes, right? When, when you know, this spark of an idea and the passion behind it and the people that were ready to say yes and that a year later that this has happened and we're sharing this is just so powerful. Um, and, and with that being said, I'd really love for you, Hillary, to describe how the design process unfolded given the distance and the cultural dynamics that you were working with. Great, and if you could allow me to do screen sharing, I'll, um, I will, I will do exactly that. So yeah. we took, hang on a second here. I just want to get it to the right slide to start. I had it and then I skipped it. Um, we we um, we had the basic process uh, developed, so it was a matter of taking that process and and again adapting it. Um, this second thing, sorry, here it was already, of course. Um, so what it, so what the wonder, taste of Wonderland process is, is based on the Alice in Wonderland story. Um, and we use it as a framework because it really does inspire curiosity and imagination while also producing some very concrete results. So the goal of this was to take the deep cracks and the pain and the wounds that, Bre that um, you know, Brown identified, that the, the horrific stories that Brown shared with us of what life is like in many of these villages, but to take that and, tr and have that be a vehicle of transformation into regenerative projects that were designed by and for the community. So we're not coming in with an idea and saying, here, implement it. We came in with a process that was adapted culturally so that people could, could, could design their own projects, but utilizing a process that allowed them to talk about the breakdowns um, and, the, and the, the, the very difficult issues that they were facing, where their lives were falling apart, to also look at uh, the, the, in the pool of tears, which is the second pro part of the process, the grief that they were experiencing, as well as as look at where there could might be hope, and also the 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 third one, which really was adapted very significantly for this process, is the Looking Glass, and it became the Looking Glass Marketplace. When we have done this online, uh, which Ingrid will know because Ingrid participated in our one of our first ones online, um, we just we presented just basic ideas. But here it was a totally different experience because we'd never done it on the ground before. We had always done it virtually, and this was the, and so it was a really interesting process to go and say, okay, now if that's, if the, we're going to do it in a place, so let's go halfway around the world and try it there, um, and um, and figure out what it could it look like and it, what can the experience be like. Um, doing that. And the last part of the process, which is where a lot of the magic happens, is when we take elements of the hallway of doors, the breakdowns, the cracks, we, uh, we bring in the pain points from the pool of tears. We look at what's really gravity, what's really exciting um, the people, and they put it together into a new project. So they combine the ingredients of those three elements into a new project. Um, and then uh, this is the this is the process translated into Tchawa. You, are, you, you tell me how I pronounce it again, Lee. Tchewa. Tchewa. So this you is almost that. got it. I almost had it. <laughs> but this so this is so everything and Brown. What an amazing guy! You know there was a lot of materials that were developed for this. This is not a just let's go talk. There were, it's a, it, it combined healing methodology, sociolo sociological, uh, anthropological, um, psychological. It combined, and the new, the new brain sciences, it combined all of that inside this little process. So um, there was a, quite a number of material, uh, uh, materials developed and, and Brown, what a trooper, there they were, they were, they were translated and, and looked beautiful. Um, so again, the first step on the process is the hallway of doors. And, and you can see that how we did it physically was, was that these, there's doorways that are, that there's 12 different doors that are planted on the ground. Um, and the women were divided into 12 groups 
uh, one for each doorway. And then they went through a number that they had chosen. They went through that particular door and each door had a different question that was posted on the back of the door. Um, and it was, uh, that was, it was a really, again, really fascinating process so that, so that each, um, so that the women could, could in fact have privacy by answering the question um, on their own, but also they would, they would also share um, their answers um, as they, as they uh, develop them. Uh, and, and for those individuals who were, who uh, were illiterate, we had, there was support provided for each woman who may not be able to read and write um, so that her input was also um, included. And, and here we have some of the women that are, are, have walked through the doors and are doing their, their, their beautiful contemplating. And then after the hallway of doors, the women, they traveled down to the river, uh, which is where they got in touch with their deeper feelings. So we were actually able to go into the river for the pool of tears. And here is where they all, they had identified all the cracks and breakdowns in their life and their lives in that in the hallway questions and in their conversation there and here they were able to let out the pain and the grief of what that had caused um, but at the same time opening themselves up for for, for seeds of, of hope and and there was a lot of reflection that was done at the river um, it was it was um, and we have a little clip of that so you could actually hear the sounds of what that sounded like it was it's phenomenal and then they wrote down the things that they were the, causing the most pain and they burned them and then gave them to the river uh, so that the river could wash them away and so that they could find, uh, so, so that they could say goodbye. And, that, that's a, and we have pictures of them waving goodbye <laughs> to, their, to, their, uh, so, to their, their pain and their sorrow so that they could actually get ready for a, for a new possibility. And then Brown had this fabulous idea about putting mirrors in different places because we called it the looking glass, right? For the going into the marketplace. Well, where Brown placed these mirrors was really great because as the women came up from the, um, up from the river, having grieved and a lot of mourning happening, they came across themselves and they were lighter and they were brighter and life had changed um, as, as, they, as they walked up through the marketplace. And then they came into this, this looking glass marketplace, which was very de designed with the facilitators at Brown to really provide some hands-on tools, both for healing, but also for them to experience some new possibilities for themselves. And so there were 10 different experiences that were designed. Five were immersive, which would take 30 minutes for one activity. So they had to choose which one of the immersive ones they would, they would participate in. And then there were five demonstration um, uh, experiences so that you, they could go and, and play around with those, that, that you know, they could pick and choose a number of those. But again, the major theme was for the women to experience and, and find a different understanding of their talents, to see themselves in different light and to see what kind of hidden potential they had. So one example of one of the immersive experiences was taking photographs of nature. And my, as, 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 uh, uh, as, as, as Lee uh, and Brown can attest to, this is a phenomenally beautiful, beautiful environment with mountains and valleys and lushness, absolutely beautiful. And so they were, they, they, the idea was taking photographs and then what was it about that, uh, that, that nature element that was talking to them? What did it reflect about them? What aspect of them was, had maybe been hidden that they, in nature that they, that they hadn't seen before through their photographs? The demonstration experience, an example, was a nutritional therapies aware, where, again, local food was used to, as, a, as a way of, it, of providing ins, insight and instruction on how to create very simple meals with recognizing the, the importance of nutrition. Um, and so other immersive experiences were trauma wisdom art, which is taking uh, things that had were represented and re reflected trauma and making art with those. A new story, which was a, a, a storytelling a process where they had characters, very different characters to create a new story about combating climate uh, tragedy, overwhelming climate tragedy. And, and on, on that note, um, there had been climate tragedy four days before because um, four days prior to this, a cyclone hit as well as flooding. 
and it was it devastated this village like it was it's phenomenal when you when you think that four days later these women were experiencing this process and brown went on the uh, two days before with his team to the village to make sure they were okay and make to make sure that they were going to be all right for this pilot and and he called me and said can you come on live and i went on live with him and and the children sang and danced and and two days before the pilot it was just at the you know two days before they'd had this massive hurricane a uh, cyclone and flooding and and so you know this was a very poignant activity actually to create a different story around climate action the Wonder Studios was a, was a reimagining business game. And then Rainfall was another immersive experience where they crocheted and knitted while, while looking at, a, at changing their, their conversation around climate change and climate action. Other demonstration experiences were uh, a, gay, a well-being game, looking at different uh, uh, ways of, of personal well-being through, through a color wheel. Each color represented a different aspect of themselves and, and a different idea of well-being. Um, there was vibrational sound therapies that the, for dance and, and, and healing through sound. Wonder Gardens uh, was also there as, a, as a, they a, a series of very different designs of Wonder Gardens and, and they were able to draw personal insights around the gardens for themselves. And then animal healers, we had a chicken, we had a goat and we had a um, pigeon. And, and those three cards, uh, along with the physical uh, represent, representatives of these animal healers, were ways of helping them identify hidden potential. So these were the types of experiences they went through in the, and they chose which ones they wanted to go through in the marketplace. And then the final step was the Mad Hatter's Tea Party where they put you know, elements of all, of all of them together to come up with their, their village project. And so we had you know, the doorway, we had the women, grieving at the at the river we had the new ideas uh, and experiences and healing modalities experienced and and then the new projects so some of the ideas that actually came out of that were were livestock farming and training in the management of livestock there were sa uh, village savings and loans as well as village banks is an idea that uh, we're being exploring new sewing businesses that actually is new fashion a whole new market opportunity here for 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 new fashion centers and it called regenerative fashion. And then establishment of irrigation schemes, which can also look at fish farming, but also do very different forms of irrigation. So these are the types of projects that they came up with at the, um, and I just wanna show you one last picture. This last picture is the team getting ready um, to, for, for, uh, for a taste of Wonderland. There we are. That was the process. It's Hillary, it's my, when I look at this and what you collaboratively, collaboratively have created, it's mind boggling. Like I just, I look at this and I'm filled with awe and emotion because I've been there and, and the spirit of the people there yes. are like, oh. when we collaborated with them, it was magical. Like what was born and that you were able to do this during, you know, a global pandemic and take this concept that had only been piloted online. And then Brown, who, who came and just was so passionate about this and execute this, like what you guys have created and, and just hearing you go through all of this and what has unfolded and is continuing to unfold is so inspiring is so inspiring and so and so moving and i guess that leads into i would love for you to share i know you have you're in the process of making a documentary yes and i'd love for you to share some of the clips from like that that were shot during this pilot project and, to give and, a better you know a deeper sense of what went on and what was so what was so fascinating was 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 also um, to be uh, sorry I'm just gonna it's just gonna come off here for, for a second though but to, the day that the pilot was running and Brown was amazing at sending us video uh, clips and um, and and sound bites and and the photographs and we're sitting there you know here in Canada having these come in and just seeing this work come to life. 
in a way that we had never imagined it coming to life. It was surreal to watch it. So there, so these are some these are some of the clips that that, that was that were, that, that, this is from the documentary. We had shorter versions of these that were sent to us that day. But um, hang on a second. I'm so excited. I, I'm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as you do that, you know, are we experience. Oh, go ahead. I'll let you uh, play this. Call to the mothers Malawi specifically emphasize on having the issues come out from the actual victims and not just assumptions from the other community elders. Therefore. A process of making these women express their feelings and emotions starts with the Hower of Doors initiative. Under this initiative, a number of 12 doors are made and planted on the ground. Behind the doors, there are placards with questions draining much on the situation that every woman might be going through. A total of 36 women divided into 12 groups will each be going to attend to their questions based on their group numbers. However, despite grouping these women, the Hawaii process still prioritizes the importance of each participant's privacy as also a way of getting real yoke of problems among these women. I just love that getting to the real yoke of problems, like the language, because the script was written by the team and the and, and the videographer, and so uh, it was wonderful to have their version of what they experienced, because they were on the ground there during the, the the pilot, and to have draining marsh on the situation and getting to the yoke of problems, like you can't get better than that. Like that is that is such a, a beautiful way of expressing it. So I'm just going to now show a clip from, um, from the Pool of Tears. But no matter how big a problem is, surely it has a solution. It is therefore needful and important to sit and liaise with your life to come up with solutions on how you can deal with your problems. That is why a test of wonderment has also incorporated the pool of tears process to let the woman cry out and release the heavy loaded hearts. Most people like to sit alone at quiet places to evaluate their situations and resolve them. In this case, this process also involves the women going to the river to think about their problems and how best they can forget and move on with their complete life. That's just a little tiny little bit of the documentary that is uh, is currently getting uh, getting put together. That's it's so powerful. I just you know I it's amazing to again I, I I'm in awe and I my experience of doing um, spending time in Malawi was that the unexpected happened beyond like what you know what we did they took what we put out there and made it not only their own, but um, it, it became richer and um, came to life mm -hmm. in a way that was so unexpected. And I think when you, when you just um, hold a container of love and of, of, you know, I think our best selves and, and, you know, coming from wanting to innovate and, um, that, you know, we had unexpected things that had never been a part of the program that we'd done that in holding this space um, just unfolded and it was magical. Um, and because of the spirit of the people and, mm -hmm. and the music and, and how they embrace things, it, it was so, like I said, so un unexpected. So I'm going to uh, now pass it over to Lisa um, to ask more questions. So Hillary, I can imagine it was super exciting and so incredible to view all this from Canada that day when the pilot kicked off. So what was the experience like for you watching this pilot start from Canada? Well, it was, it was, 
I think I got ahead of myself when I sort of talked, I think I talked a little bit about that, um, just about the fact that it was surreal. And, um, and, you know, we, somebody asked me one day, well, how we could, you know, how did you just sort of hand everything over? Like you weren't physically there. Um, you just handed it over to other people first time ever to run something like, and, and there was absolute trust that that Brown had was the right person to, to lead the team there. He was the right person to, um, and I'd come to, to get to, got to know Brown throughout the, the, the year um, in many different ways. When my father turned a hundred, Brown sent beautiful photographs and, and wishes to my dad. Um, and, and, they, and, and, be, and, and so we, we'd come to know each other in a really lovely way over the course of, of developing this. So it, it was a no brainer to hand it over. Um, and it was a no brainer to, to look at how do we collaborate in such a way that, that we're all going to learn something phenomenal um, throughout this and we'll all be changed as a result of this. And so that's what happened that day was just, it was like Christmas. I, in fact, we said the night before, I felt like Christmas Eve. Um, and it certainly, it did turn out to be Christmas the next day. Amazing. I think what came to mind for me when you were saying that is when things are created in love and we spoke about this before, it's all just going to work out and it's always meant to be. And it's that part of those synchronicities. So very, very exciting. And I'm also going to show a second clip of Brown now uh, sharing his experience of the taste of wonderland when he was in Malawi. So the experience of taste of wonderland was amazing as most of the things that transpired were real issues that happened in the community and women were not able to express themselves because of the pain, culture of oppression and the thought they don't have potential. But after the pilot, the innermost talent were discovered. This was through the process women underwent as shown in the clips. The pilot opened our eyes that we have the capacity to co-create. The process was an eye-opener and it will help the facilitators, the community and the many Malawians to realize their potentials. It has helped me as an individual and I feel like I am a new person together. At first, I never thought that I have a potential and I lacked courage, but through the process and the pilot of the test of one land, I realized that I have potential to achieve more in life at my family and at a country level. Thanks. I love how he says he was even changed by it. And, you know, he wasn't even really doing the process. He was just creating this and supporting it and leading it. And he felt a massive change in himself, which is amazing. And each one of the facilitators um, have, have, have said that. And, and they're, they're incredible human beings, these, these facilitators, incredibly gifted, like to be able to take a process, like to take a process such as this, that has embedded so many different, you know, psychology, sociology, healing, all those modalities that are wrapped up into this process and be able to facilitate that um, in the way that they did was absolutely magical. And, and they so believed in it. You know, they, they believed that this was something that they had, were honored to be able to do. And, and with that feeling, they just brought it to life in such fabulous ways. And because they were enthusiastic and because they were excited, you know, and because they were, and they grieved with the women and they were with the women. And, and, and we had one female facilitator and, and four males. And which is interesting given the, the, you know, this was an all female uh, group that went through it. And yet these men were phenomenal in, in how they held the space for these women. Mm, that's amazing. So awesome. So awesome to hear. So Hillary, um, could you please share with us the outcomes from the pilot in Malawi? Yes, I would love to just hang on a second here. Let me get to the right. Uh, and while you're doing that, Hill, I just wanted to also say that something that really struck me by listening to what Brown said was um, that the women didn't think that they had potential and that, you know, 
he didn't think he had potential and the courage. And, and I think that this is kind of a universal thing for all of us. The, you know, I was having a conversation with someone else today, and I think it's, it's often our belief in ourselves. And when we believe in each other, and when we, you know, creating something like this, the potentials of, you know, the sparks that are created, right? The, you know, the magic that, that unfolds from it. So I just really wanted to highlight that in, in how um, everyone was touched by it um, and that it is such a universal thing for all of us, um, no matter where we are on the planet. Absolutely, Lee. And the most beautiful part about it is the process on the surface is incredibly simple. You, visit, you go through a door and answer a question, you go to the river and, and grieve and let the pain out, you go to a marketplace and shop for ideas, <laughs> which we love to do as women, and then you put them all together, bibbidi bobbidi boo You know, on the surface, it's an incredibly simple process, but embedded underneath that is deep theory around the need to be able to vent the ideas out to to grieve the things out to let open space up to then to so to let things die inside and to open up for the rebirth that the wow ideas are all about so you know it is that you know and and by going through that your own you've made way for your inner potential to shine because you've allowed you create a space for it and you've created opportunity for it and you're doing this in community Yes. Um, so, so the I just want to really briefly uh, just go through some of the outcomes. What we what, what some of the things that we learned. Um, we certainly did learn um, the power of resilience. Uh, given the fact that four days before there was this ravaging of the cyclone and the winds and the flooding, um, but in many ways that made room for the activities. <laughs> You know, that the, as nature does, it sweeps away things we no longer need, and it opens us up to new possibilities. And that certainly um, was the case with, um, with this particular uh, cyclone. But the resilience of the women four days, uh, four days after to be able to, uh, to engage in this process was fantastic. And around that, the power of women to regenerate climate action. They're approaching, they will be approaching climate change and climate action in fundamentally different ways. Than, than science normally has or with active, the way activism normally does because it's interwoven in how they're shifting their lives and their possibilities. It's all part of that. And, and look at these colors. Look at these vibrancies of these colors. This is the way they're going to deal with climate action, with those patterns, with those colors, with that vibrancy. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. And they have the power to regenerate a village. And look at Brown, there he is dancing. Um, you know, the, the, the possibilities of being able to look at how this village can, can move into a different way of understanding each other. Uh, or, um, because as they start to unleash their own, their own superpowers, of course, the whole community starts to benefit from that. And then there's the power of reflection. Being able to think back, getting the luxury of time. These women are very busy. They, they run households and, and lives and all of that. And to be able to take some time for themselves and to reflect on themselves was a really important part. And the power of water. The four days before it had been disaster. It had, it had you know, become, it was the worst thing ever. And then it was the, it was the healer during the process. And we need both sides of water to be able to help us understand transformation. And the power of movement, dancing ideas into being. That's why it was so important that there was always movement. There was movement going to the doors and back from the doors. There was ritual. There was moving down to the river and back from the river. There was the intermingling in, in the marketplace. And then at the end, the dancing that brought everything to being again. And the power of rebirth through the paradox of both grief and wonder. And finding breakthrough, breaking through the, the old way of seeing ourselves, uh, the old way of seeing what, what we need to be thinking about, what we should be doing, uh, the old way of living, um, and starting to see new possibilities. You know, that, that, that was a, the phenomenal breakthrough that they, did, that they developed. And the power of tasting wonderland. And one final outcome 
um, is the power of potential. And Rupert is, uh, was, uh, he was with the team on the ground. He is the Zamba District Gender Officer. And he has endorsed this project in ways that are just phenomenal. Um, and we have, a, we have a, a sound recording that we will be sending through in the follow-up from uh, Rupert. But he says, the hope is the taste of Wonderland will benefit many Malawans as government will look to incorporate all the important aspects of the process into government's program to reach out to millions of Malawians in rural and community development. Like, boy, you couldn't get a better endorsement than that. Those are some of the learnings and outcomes in addition to the actual projects. That's so powerful that it's being involved with the government too and being spread wide throughout Malawi. And yeah, all I could think about when you were showing those pictures was the beautiful colors and the smile. I love the smile in the mirror too of that one, that one woman. So, so powerful. So thank you for sharing that, Hillary. Very exciting outcomes and beautiful to see. Um, and now I'm going to share the final recording of Brown, who discusses the next steps for the project. After the pilot of the test of one land, the team continued meeting with the binary community. The aim was to have an observation on what they are currently doing. The community is very much excited and salivating for the project to kick off as they want to transform their lives and their community. Apart from this, they want to be a model of village where other communities can learn from. To show their excitement, the community has given a call to the mothers a piece of land since much of the projects will be done in the community. Community and, and Malawi team hopes that the projects the women came up with will happen including piloting of test of one land to other youth, not only in Zomba, but across the country. On top of that, Malawi government through Zomba district general office would like to adopt some of the concepts of the test of one land and incorporate them in their programming system with an aim of reaching out to many women and the youth across the globe. Thanks so much. Don't you love the salivating for, for action to happen? Like how you can't get better than that. And, and, and literally that is what, the, what Brown has been sharing with us. And, um, and this it was one of the, the, the participants of the Taste of Wonderland who donated her land, donated her land to call to the Mother's Malawi for it to become this demonstration center. Like, my Lord, you can't, you don't see that very often. Wow, that is amazing, powerful, incredible, all in one. And I think we're going to wrap it up here, Hillary. So can you tell us what's next from your end? So, so what's next from our end is that um, we are looking, we are looking to, uh, to mobilize two really important to continue this on. The youth have asked a number of times for a Taste of Wonderland process for them. And so it, we want to design and run a, a Taste of Wonderland process focused on youth, which will be different. I uh, the same framework, but a different experiences because of being youth. Um, so we're looking for resources and help and funding to be able to do that. We are also looking um, to for funding to be able to um, certain develop this land in a way that the community wants to develop it for the call to the mothers Malawi. And, and um, one of the ideas that has come is to create a wonder garden um, on that land that, uh, that does a, that, that integrates the, a different form of irrigation, but, it, but irrigation based on, on patterns of sewing and crocheting and knitting, not the typical engineering patterns of, of, uh, of, of irrigation and also including in that regenerative agriculture. At the same time, it's so wonderful to see the possibilities for creating a new market for fashion design. They asked for sewing machines and to look at sewing clothes, but there's an opportunity here to work with textiles that would normally be thrown out and repurposing textiles with their talents and their skills um, to be able to design clothing as well as, as, well as make it. 
And, um, and so that, and there's a network now establishing of, of rural communities that are starting to look at these new markets. And so those are two of the examples that we want to explore with them as well as obviously the bank. So, so that uh, for, for the Malawi project, um, that is what we're, we're looking to do. And in, in Canada, we are looking to put out a drastic call because we desperately, desperately need a fundamentally new approach to mental health and, and, and addiction. And, um, uh, you know, the members of our team are all, have all experienced it here in Canada, um, it, Rami and I, as well as Brett in, in where Brett is right now, you know, he, he, he is, he's gone through a lot of the systems issues that the institutionalizing issues that there many face today. And we desperately need uh, to, to continue to do the, re to do the research on what else could be possible. And that's what we wanna do is to run Tastes of Wonderland throughout the country um, to explore a different model of, of dealing with mental health. And what the women have shown us is don't talk to us about mental health. Talk to us about reimagining our lives. Because when we reimagine our lives, we are coming into something that is so much more powerful in which mental health is a, an important element, but we are more than our mental abilities. And for many that are struggling with mental health concerns, it's not just mental health, it's emotional, it's karmic, it's trauma, it's so many other things that, that the brain just is not, it was only one facet of. So those are the things that we are looking to do um, what's next. Super exciting. And are you also getting involved with the University of Toronto, Hillary? Yes, we, we are. We're, we're looking to do a, a pilot, um, a physical pilot at the University of Toronto. Um, and, you, you know, again, I think that there's, there's so many opportunities to do this. Um, and we've got to stop looking for permission um, to do it and just do it. Um, because, because, you know, we've gone through all the, the, the major mental health organizations in Canada. And we, and including the new, uh, the new Ministry of Health and um, of Mental Health and Addiction, and you know they're very busy trying. They're very, very, very busy trying to uh, keep up with increasing demand, and so they're that's their focus of dealing with the current system, making the current system deal with current with the demands. And yet we know that seventy five percent of the people are falling through the cracks because the current system don't address their needs. Hmm. Very sad. And, you know, it seems like you have an amazing idea that's going to change a lot of lives, Hillary. So looking forward to hearing everything that happens with this. Um, and I would like to mention that George had said in the chat, very enjoyable and educational. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. And would it be possible for Brown to, to see if we can open it up for Brown to give his, um, his thoughts, having have me babble on all about his project? That would be great. Yeah, Brown, if you you can unmute yourself. And if anyone has questions for Brown or Hillary um, as well, but Brown, uh, why don't you unmute and, and have a chat with us? It's okay. Can you pin him? Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. And uh, to share with you uh, the, how we ran the process of test of one land. It was uh, really wonderful. And uh, uh, it was really good uh, that we, we made this uh, an amazing ladies uh, here in Vanuata as well as uh, Rayfield Brook. So I'm just very excited to see you guys uh, uh, doing this kind of presentation, which is also uh, has just moved my our hearts. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. So he is a friend. Yes, I'm Lolent, Lolent Fuarika, one of the team members. Yes. We are so grateful. Like just, I, you know, I, I, I truly am in awe of what has been accomplished by this team in such a short period of time. And, and it just, I think shows us that when you, you know, when you have a passion to make a difference and you take those steps, like, you know, Brown, you, you really taking the rein with this and reaching out to Hillary and what has happened. And I think so uniquely so, and what it can show us 
here in Canada, what you're teaching us by doing this um, is, is amazing. And, you know, I really, um, like, I'd also like to highlight how, um, how can people help, right? Like, um, Hillary or Brown, can you speak to how, because we can all help in different ways, whether it obviously be financing things, but also how can people that are either on the call or might hear the broadcast after, how can they get involved? Like, what can they do? What are some of the things that are really most needed to help, especially the, the projects that have been identified and obviously to continue to pilot this, but, you know, how can we all help? Uh, maybe I can jump in before, he, before Hirari. Uh, actually, help can come in different ways. Uh, like uh, if there are some uh, financial, financial, material, financial uh, material, as well as uh, if we, there are some kind of uh, uh, ideas uh, from different stakeholders that they can bring in so that they can impart into us. Uh, so that we can be able to implement them on the ground. We are also looking for the people to like our page, uh, Code with the Mothers. Uh, we have just launched their website, uh, which is being learned by uh, Brett and uh, Romy. Uh, so if, we, uh, if, we, if, we, if, we, if people are coming in to like our page, it means they are also supporting the initiative. So yeah, that's all what I can say, but uh, all in all, uh, 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 Hira is going to uh, to add uh, 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 something. <laughs> Brown knows me too well. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you so much. Uh, you and, and Lawrence and Panji, who's also on the call, who is also one of our facilitators as well. Um, I how to help is just contact us. You know, just contact us and and talk to people about this project. You know, there is a there is an energy around this project, and there is a magic around this project. And the more that people can connect, can can hear about it and connect to it, and to feel the power of it, and that's why we you know one of the ideas we have for the documentary is actually prov providing the clips and all the the footage um, in a contest. And having any filmmaker wh who wants to make a three minute uh, um, video uh, together, edit together what they think the story of A Taste of Wonderland is. So we're looking at really some different creative ways of getting the story out. So it's getting the story out is one of the best ways that we, you can help us. There will be the documentary. We will be help in developing the tools, what you think is an important way to get the story out. That, that's also important. Um, you know, we're inside this. So, um, and, and so we really need some objectivity sometimes in terms of saying, well, maybe if you did this this way, or maybe if you, you know, we, we know we need help with our website. We know we need, um, you know, we, we know we need help with social media. Um, it's getting the story out so that the project can evolve. So any help with that would be fantastic. And I put I put in um, um, and and Car Carly, you want to ask a question about the projects? I do. Hello, everybody. It's so heartwarming to hear this beautiful African accent. Um, I'm from South Africa, so it's just wonderful to feel this energy. Um, what a magnificent process to to get ideas and to empower. What is really important now is taking those projects and making that come alive. So that work that Brown seems to be doing right now is, is really where the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if it will be possible for Brown's team, maybe with you, Hillary, to formulate, or maybe it ex already exists, like, you know, almost like a project charter. Yes. For each of the projects, is it there? Does it exist? Does it determine? Is it clear like what is truly needed? Because and, it's more than learning. It's also the financial support. Right. It's the skills that people may be able to share. It's all those type of things. So I'm just wondering, 
that next oomph that is needed. Yes. And here's the catch 22, because we want to do it with the women. And we want mm -hmm. them, we want them to be, this, this is their project. So it's working with them in, again, a unique process where they're not just sitting around and talking, where they're actually doing in, in you know, using some of our own tech, um, some of their techniques of, of sewing and whatever else uh, to be able to have those conversations about what is this project look like, providing them with guidelines on the type, you know, what we information that's needed, but for them to bring forward their ideas about what that could look like. But to do that, we need funding because we also, we, we, we need for, we, we want, we, the brand, we need the, the team in, um, on site to be paid. We would also like to help the, have pay the women to develop the ideas with us because this is part of their business development process. So, you know, so, we're, so that's where the stage we're at. We're in that funny stage, Carly, where we, you know, that, that where we know we need, we need these business profiles. We absolutely need these business profiles because the, through that we'll get the funding. At the same time, we, Brett has been looking for and now we've been trying to find well, how could we actually get funding to do that so that this becomes part of the startup. This is an exciting startup process. And how do we do that in a way that recognizes the culture that also recognizes that we might want to leapfrog how these projects look like in, 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 in um, the, 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 we believe, I and I firmly do, that there is magic sitting in these women and in, those, in, in our team that can take a, 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 rud a rudimentary idea and, and make it magic. And, and to do that through the, pro the charter process or the business development process is what we're looking to do. Okay. So that's, the, that's, where, we're, that's, that's where we are at the moment. And, and we may have to circumvent and try it a different way, but right now, that's what we were planning on on doing is to is to find is to look for the funding to actually do this business startup work that needs to get done there in a, in a way that was really different around because recognizing the cultural uh, richness. Okay, that's a whole other conversation, right? The one about where you are going to be looking for the funding. Yes, I'm sure that's a different call, maybe Lee. <laughs> And, and we would yeah. love those conversations because there's also a new dynamic of financing that's starting to emerge. And last week I was on uh, Change Making Week with Catalyst 2030, an organization of social entrepreneurs and social innovators that are you know, moving towards 2030 with the SDGs. And there's a whole financing movement around getting out of the old philanthropy, the old charity, the old you know, dynamic of that, which is 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 great if you can get the money through that i'm not turning you know we're not turning any money down but we also know that there's a new, another movement that's happening um that i think is also very exciting about how to resource these uh, these types of projects excellent um so th so i think it, it, that's obviously something maybe we can talk about and anybody on this call who would like to be part of that to let us know um about uh, how, how how could we approach this in a way that will get the funding into the right place but but in a way that actually isn't the typical old charity funding that comes with strings that you have to do it a certain way you know what i mean like that we're we're, we're trying to see what, how we can break that mold right yeah maybe there is an element of crowdfunding around it with yes. with the documentary that you've got um and really uh, speaking to those unique projects that are, you know, highlighting some of those and maybe some samples of what is already, you know, the magic that's unfolding there and saying, hey, you know, help bring this to life. But, yeah. but I do, I do, we need, we desperately need help on that financing part. That's not, that's not our expertise. That is not our, um, you know, we're social innovators and we're social entrepreneurs and Rami's an academic and, you know, a great teacher and, and, and university professor. Um, and, and Brett is a visionary par excellence. But when it comes to the financing part, that is something we really, really could do with some help. Well, we've put the call out to the universe and, uh, and yes, anyone that is, um, please reach out to Hillary. Um, if you're interested in, in being involved. Um, Brown, was there anything else that you wanted to share with us? Uh, 
uh, actually, I just want to appreciate for the uh, for allowing uh, code to the mothers uh, to be uh, uh, air, 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 to, to air their views and the sharing the uh, document, uh, meaning the, pro the how the process was like and uh, uh, the outcomes and the call for the funding to uh, implement these uh, initiatives in Malawi. I really appreciate uh, for all those who managed to participate in this uh, show. And uh, I, I, I would like also to thank uh, my team here in Malawi for the cooperative as well as uh, uh, the district, the, the, the Malawi government for allowing us to conduct this test of one land and the support they have lent to us I would like also to, uh, to, to, to thank the community members, chiefs, as well as uh, 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 the organizations that have been uh, with us during the test, test of funding process and their support, and they are gearing also to support us in any initiative that will be uh, come to Malawi uh, through Code to the Mothers Malawi. So we are really excited. Uh, so for now we are in the planning of uh, 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 getting registered so that we can be conducting our activities uh, freely here in Malawi as a test of uh, Code to the Mothers Malawi. So I really appreciate, I'm looking forward for the new developments in Malawi as we are changing lives of the most vulnerable members of the community, especially women, children, and girls. So thanks so much. Thank you, Brown. We are just honored and grateful. And yeah, <laughs> you can hear the emotion in my voice. I, you know, it's just, it's, it's just um, so special to have this call this evening. And I just, you know, it's why Lisa and I started Lila to begin with was to create, you know, conversations that make an impact and the, you know, you guys have made an impact and that is, you know, thank you. Thank you. And I'm so excited to see how this continues. Like I'm excited a year from now to see really what's, you know, like what you've already achieved. So a year from now that this is going to be a whole other level of, of what's made an impact, not only in, in Malawi, but here in Canada as well. So Thank you for your generous spirit and, um, you know, what, what you've been able to, Brown, what you've been able to take and, and make real from something that was, you know, only piloted online is, is just incredible and in translating all of that. So thank you. And thank you for tonight getting up in the middle of the night, because I think it's like two or three in the morning right now. So yeah. thank you for being with us in the middle of the night. Uh, we're incredibly so grateful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. So special. So special. So um, I'd just like to, Hillary, did you have any last words before we do our closing intentions? Just very much appreciate everybody here uh, for coming and for listening and for holding the space for us to share. We're obviously very proud mothers and fathers um, and um, of an initiative that we truly believe in and that we truly believe can show Canada that there is another way to approach one of our most chronic and painful and horrific situations in the area of mental health. So, um, you know, we, we, we've been shown by some beautiful Malawans of how to do that in a little village of Benali. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And I think it's something that touches most people's lives. And so mm -hmm. this is why, you know, I think this kind of initiative is so powerful and how we can come together as community. I think that's the other lesson here is, is when we collaborate and when we listen and when we share, anything's possible. And that's what this, I think, time has also shown us. Yeah. So thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Brown. Um, sending love to Ramilla this evening and, and thanking her and Brett for all the beautiful work that's been put into this, um, this project and this initiative. So um, I'd now like to do our closing intention. Um, so if you please shut your eyes. As we close our time together with gratefulness to all, we pause. 
to offer each other love and kindness. May our understanding of love be expanded by what we have shared as we open ourselves to growth. May we rest and trust and surrender ourselves and our paths to divine grace, asking that this time together be protected, corrected, and held high. May we now see through love's eyes and understand beyond words. May we all be safe, happy, and healthy. May we all rest in full joy and know that there is no distance between friends in time or space. Divine strength and peace surround us until we meet again. Please open your eyes. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Lisa for our final announcements. Thanks again, Hillary Brown and everyone for joining us tonight. It's an incredibly inspiring evening. So to recap our conversation this evening with the call to the mothers, the women in Benali came in as individuals with their own traumas. These became collective traumas, which opened the portal to collective healing and community action. Nature can play a significant role in social innovation from the cyclone and flooding that prepared the way to the physical environment, such as the river that played key roles and the intelligence of nature that was embedded in the looking glass marketplace. And finally, we have to move away from the framing of mental health. That term brings enormous baggage, stigma and limitations. It is easy to get stuck in drama, trauma and karma. Allowing ourselves to let go of those to let go of those to explore new possibilities never before imagined can be all of our destinies. Reimagining life rather than treating mental illness is something these women of the Benali village showed us. If you are an overthinker, tired of struggling, or if you have friends and family that can use this support, please feel free to contact Lee at any time. She does a complimentary discovery session and she'll put the link to direct access to her website in our chat. Finally, our next Leela event will be held on Wednesday, June 29th with Guru Nishan, who is a writer, speaker, trauma healing activist and consultant specializing in body-based cultural intelligence. The focus of the night will be on uncomfortable conversations on well-meaning white people. We'll discuss intention versus impact, the violence of silence, as well as spiritual and cultural bypassing that consistently misses the humanity of black indigenous people and bodies of all culture. Hope to see some of you there. So until next time, everyone, be well, aloha, and good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.